Well, th this has been an issue that I pursued for the whole of my time in, in the House of Commons. And I felt very strongly, and still do, that the unborn child uh, should not just be randomly aborted merely as a matter of, of choice. We have 600 abortions in Britain every single day, and even this morning in the newspapers in Britain there were reports of the babies being aborted purely on the grounds that they're little girls. This cannot be right, and so seven million abortions later, since the law was changed, I think the law is wrong, but I think attitudes and hearts need to be changed. I think that's the most important thing that we need to do. And in 1992, after I'd successfully promoted a bill, it never lost a vote at any stage in the Commons, to challenge the upper time limits beyond which abortions could take place, my then party decided that it would no longer allow this to be a conscience question, but it decided it was going to make it a matter of party policy. And I, for me personally, this was a Rubicon I couldn't cross, so I said I wouldn't uh, support it and I would stand down at the next election. Ironically, on the very day that it was decided to make it a policy, an animal welfare motion was passed by the same party that even included protection for goldfish being sold in amusement arcades and fun fairs. And I, I said on television that day that a party that in the morning would say it's necessary to protect goldfish being sold in amusement arcades, but in the afternoon would tell me that I couldn't have a conscience about the plight of the unborn child wasn't worthy of my emotional or intellectual respect any longer. And so I announced that I would stand down at the following general election, which I did. And I was then very surprised to be offered by the then Prime Minister, John Major, the opportunity to serve in the House of Lords, which is why I'm here as an independent, with, and I've not been a member of a political party since that time.